What's up guys and gals and welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games we're checking back in on the early access build of Godhood. We played this one back when it first released to Steam and it was a fun game. It was a fun game with some unique ideas about converting people over to your religion while at the same time having a central city that you were building and kind of turning into the mecca of your faith. And so anyways, this game has had some updates since the last time we played around with it, so I figured this was a really good time to double back, check it on out, have some fun, and see what things have been added. As you can see right here, they're on their third update now. So there's been three updates since we played the game last. Uh, this time around, it's a create your own religion mode. So if that was the kind of thing you ever wanted to do, you can now do that. It's available. So, what kind of god are we? We can be serene, or we can be ambitious. You won't lose the game if you run out of crystal skulls. You can save any time that you want. And we'll go with ambitious. That sounds good. And we'll play on the default settings, because obviously that's the best for a first impressions video. We want to give you guys the best impression of the game as it would be played by you as possible as we go through this video. So let's create our god. I'm looking forward to Mandate. Having Divine Mandate sounds like it'd be pretty rad. And you are? How should we address you? You should address me as... My Emperor. Oh, that's not gonna work though. It's gotta have contextual things. Supporters worship... The Emperor. Perfect. Everyone must be faithful to the Great Emperor and his light which guides us through the warp which keeps the beacon lit and holds back the legions of chaos. All right. What will our religion be called? Our religion will be called the Pact. There we go. The Pact. That was my favorite quest in Borderlands 3, if you couldn't tell. The Pact. That 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 quest had me dying when I went through it. Uh, let's see here. What are your worshipers called? Oh, I don't know. Our worshippers will be called... I call them minions, but everybody's gonna associate that with the little yellow guys that hang out with Gru. I don't wanna do that. Like, I feel like minions is a really, really... I'm gonna call them... My serfs. There we go. The serfs worship the emperor. Exactly. See? How will you be addressed? I will be a god. And then what is our style? I think we should be a god of light. We should be a god of purity but also a god of vengeance for anyone who refuses to accept that purity. Our color, white is a pure color. Let's customize, we've got like our little thing over here. Oh, we can like decide what we look like, okay. Apparently there's a bunch of different arms we can have. We can have hats? Well, I should definitely have a hat. Like, look at some of these hats. These are some fancy hats out here. These are some downright impressive hats. I think I'm gonna go with this hat right here. That hat right there, I think, really captures me as a human being. That's a hat, and see, I like how he isn't even addressing the hat with his eyes. He just knows that he has an awesome hat on. He doesn't need to address it because he has confidence in the hat. I'm gonna choose what I will have. That one matches our hat, so I feel like that one's a good idea. Now we gotta pick our body. Oh, my body, to, ooh, we could have like a little tummy gut right there. Okay, I don't know what body I wanna have. I think I'm gonna have a little bit of beef on me, man. I think I'm gonna have a little bit of extra weight. You never know when the flu is gonna strike, all right? Having a little bit of that extra BMI, just in case a serious illness comes along, you know? You don't wanna be wiped out by an illness if you're a god of purity. We gotta make sure that we are stout, that we have constitution. What kind of head can we have? Oh, I don't know. Some of these make our bodies seem a little bit too large. This guy's got them killer gauges right there. This guy's been stretching since he was 16 years old. He's got like them four inch gauges. I only ever got up to a half inch. Uh, fair warning, the hole never closes, so good luck with that. I'm gonna have a beard, man. I'm gonna have a rocking beard. That's exactly what we need. We need a rocking ass beard. Let it be known. I like that the button says let it be known instead of just like confirm. Let it be known. See, that has mandate to it. For as long as there have been people to believe, there have been gods to vie for their attention. The Emperor is one such god, destined to claim their place in humanity's hearts and minds. They would start with a single soul, destined to become the first prophet of the Pact. From nothing, the Emperor appeared before Karmana. Karmana renounced their faith in the old god, Quetzalcoatl, and placed it in the Emperor instead. 
That's a good minion right there. That's what you should absolutely do if you just want to be penetrated by purest light. First, the Emperor taught Karmana about what is right. Um, definitely not chastity. I'm not down with that at all. Absolutely not. We're, chastity will never be a part of my religion. You go out and you have tremendous raucous lovemaking with whoever you want, whenever you want, the middle of the street, behind a hut, inside some bushes. I don't even care. I don't believe in chastity. Absolutely no. Madness seems like maybe that might lead us down a path that we don't want to go into. Lust is going the entire other direction. Like, I don't want it to be a mandate. I want you to do whatever you want in good conscience. I think we should be a god of war. Yeah. Let's be a god of war. That sounds awesome. It's the first one listed. It's the only one with a red button. And obviously, I have to push the red button. The elders who worship the ancestors considered this idea to be dangerous. This will only lead to destruction and agony. They could not see how they were wrong in opposing the Embra. A sacrament was called to determine who was right. What does a sacrament do? Something tells me that Carmana's about to catch a beat down. Yeah, you shake that palm tree. You shake it. Ooh, the strike was merciless. Ow, that hurts though. Stop that. Did you seriously just lecture me in the middle of a battlefield? How could you? We were just defeated by a stern lecture. Brutal. The elders were resolute in their judgment. Carmana and a few followers were banished from the old city. Before leaving, Carmana prophesied that one day the emperor would come back and conquer the old city. Absolutely right we will. Vengeance is mine. So saith the emperor. Carmana continued to travel for days with the exiled. The people were growing tired and hopeless. Finally, on a fertile and lush terrace, the emperor spoke again. This shall be the emperor's holy site. A new religion is apparently founded. Aw oh, yeah, we are the best. So we got Carmana over here. This is the basis for our village right here. As of right now, our only magical god power seems to be illuminating shrubs. So I don't think we're going to convert a lot of followers just off that power. That's not a great power. So anyways, we can assign our disciple to a ritual or a miracle. Okay. I don't really know what I want to assign her to. It looks like she can gather serfs over here. So there you go. We're apparently in an age of darkness. Well, praying inside... Oh, look, we've got little people. They're being attracted to our great doctrine. Yes, welcome, friends. Welcome. Welcome to the land of vengeance. Tis good to have you. What is this right here? So we had our first gathering. We need three more religion nodes in order to level up our religion. All right. Sounds like a plan. I think we're officially, like, done here. Apparently, I can purchase an upgrade right now. Do I want to purchase an upgrade? I don't know if I want to purchase an upgrade right this second. I think she's ready to upgrade. Or, I'm not sorry. She's not ready to upgrade. Our holy sight center might be ready to upgrade. It looks like choose a disciple. The higher the disciple's faith, the better. All right. Uh, we can select a building. This ritual site is already full, so we can't do anything over there. What happens if I tell this to upgrade? Ah. I need materials in order to do that so that we can have extra slots for assignments. Okay, sounds good. Apparently, we can get, like, pomflets or something. I honestly have no idea what a pomflet does. We also have people satisfied and remember our magnificence. Nice, dude! One way that I would love to be described in life is magnificent. We can also develop our religion. We can go with savagery or we can go with valor. Let's go with valor. Yeah, that sounds good. Valorous disciples will be recruitable when using recruit new disciples. Yeah, let's do it. We'll go to aspire to valor because being valorous seems like the kind of thing that we should definitely do. And so now that we've done all of our tasks for the day, I think we go to the next turn. So they're going to hang out over here. She's going to continue like inspiring people and doing what she does. I don't know how long that's going to take. It looks like she's filling up a meter right there. Yeah. All right. We'll see what happens here. Ocelot prayed at the Holy Sites Center, and they collected new serfs. Nice! I shall take heed of their faith in me. Two disciples in awe of this prayer pledged themselves to the pact. They were young Ocelot and Marathu. They wanted to partake in prayer at the Holy Sites Center and collect serfs. 
Gain surfs to increase your god level and unlock new options for your religion. Okay, yeah, do it. Being a young god, it might be prudent to learn how to develop and manage your religion. Note from the developers, recommend you read any tutorials marked new. Okay, so we have new features. So we have resource gathering. New serfs generated by your disciples remain doubtful, and they will wish to witness the emperor's greatness in a holy sacrament before committing to their faith. Okay, resources gathered by disciples are added to our tribute, and so we can use tribute in order to do something. If we lose a sacrament, and our opponent will take our tribute, and we only get 50% of what was gathered. All right, okay. So I went through and I read all the little menus and stuff that they had going on here. It's been a long time since I played the game last, so I figured I might as well. Uh, we have a couple of initiates now. We have Ocelot, so we have Karmana, we have Ocelot, and we have Marathu. Uh, with you oh, we can customize them, too. We can actually change what they look like if we want to. It looks like each of these guys have a collection of stats. They've got Might, which is damage and accuracy for physicality. We've got Health, which is pretty self-explanatory. We've got Cunning, which apparently determines your initiative in combat, gives you a crit chance, evade chance, opposes the enemy's crit chance. Okay. We've got Charisma, which allows us to protect and deal morale damage. We've got Devotion, which gives us morale armor. Okay, so this is accuracy and damage on morale. This is defense for morale. Gotcha. And then we've got Knowledge over here, which is a chance to pick an optimal target instead of directly across from it. So I guess the combat, we don't control it. So the knowledge is basically how smart the AI is, I guess, when it comes to, like, picking who they're going to attack, who's weakest, so on and so forth. All right. Well, do any of you guys want to work on anything right now? Let's see. So we can assign a disciple. I will more than likely, let's go ahead and just, we'll, we'll assign Beardy Guy over here. Beardy Guy, go gather some serfs. We need some more people so that we can grow this city on up. We also have a map right here where we can go out on a mission. On the whole of the island, people speak of a new belief. Okay. So I gotta choose disciples to go with me. We'll take you. We'll take you. We'll take you. Sounds good. All of my guys appear to be kind of ready. For this situation. They've got three guys that are level two. We've got three guys that are like level eight, level five, and level five. I think we're going to be okay. It's going to cost us a crystal skull to go in. Uh, basically, the crystal skull, as I understand it, is every religion has six crystal skulls. And as you run into each other and you fight each other, you will gain or lose skulls. And the last man standing that has all the skulls with everybody else deprived of them is the winner among the pantheon. So anyways, in case you were wondering about that, that's a new feature that was not in the game last time. Alright, so there goes one of our crystal skulls, the cost of doing business. War. War never changes. Yeah, you guys do your thing, man. Uh, one thing you do need to know is the health pool in this game is shared between all followers. So, it doesn't really matter who takes the damage. All that really matters is that the damage is dealt. That means that a dodge is one of the most damaging things you can have in this game. Like, if you dodge somebody's attack, that's massive because of the shared health pools. Much more so than if you had three characters and crits and everything else to consider. Ocelot can apparently unlock his class. Alright, he's got cat talents right now. That means he has major cunning. So we probably want to give him something that allows him to be very, very cunning. So he can be an executioner. That means that he needs cunning, which will increase his physical armor, apparently? I don't know. It says his important stats are cunning and might. We've got health and cunning for a guardian. That guy's got might and health. Okay. So it seems like... We'll go with Beast Walker. Beast Walker sounds pretty good. He's going to lose HP by becoming a Beast Walker, but at the same time, my guess is that he's going to become quite evasive and difficult to hit. What does this mean? So he favors Executioner, Beast Walker. Oh, it's just telling you. Okay, it's giving you a physical representation of what classes are the best decision for this guy. So this guy is strong enough to do a miracle. Oh, really? Well, let's send him back and have him do something miraculous. On the whole island, people speak of a new belief. Oh, dude, we just got 45 serfs. Nice. And we just got a whole bunch of materials. So that's this is all new. 
When I was playing the game last time, you were like building the huts and stuff that were all over the village. It looks like they scrapped that, and now as your city gets larger and you get more serfs, they just automatically build stuff and it gets more of an organic feeling to it. That it like, it's the city is not the point of the game, your religion is the point of the game. So I think that was a smart idea. In honor, we serve the pact. Hell yeah. So unlock a new activity that will sometimes happen in your city. Apparently it's two people arguing in their underwear, which is a pretty popular ritual around my house. When picking new initiates to become disciples, you also get initiates from Valorous. Valorous disciples will be recruitable when using Recruit New Disciples. These disciples have totems with a talent for health. Okay. And then we've got a new villager outfit too. Sweet. Nice. We now have a small circle of followers. 55 people is definitely a village. Like, we've moved on up from being like nothing to being a village. Nice. Soon we will be a township. In their sacrament victory, some disciples gained a miracle charge. These disciples are ready to perform a powerful miracle. However, they cannot just occur anywhere. Your disciples want to construct holy places important to the faith where they can enact those miracles. Okay, well, let's get going and erect things. So we've got a building we can build down here. We can do a herder's hut. Now, this will increase our disciples' health. We can do a hunter's lodge. This will increase cunning. We can go with farmlands, which will increase might. We can go to a prayer site, which will increase their devotion. We've got one that'll do their knowledge at a meditation site. And we've got a storytelling circle that'll increase their charisma. Since our religion is mostly focused on top bar skills, so like might, health, and cunning, I think we should probably go with one of those. Let's go ahead and we'll go with, since we've got somebody that's specialized in cunning, we'll do that right there. Yeah, that sounds good. How long is it going to take for that to be done? This guy's working on that over there, so unfortunately that's going to take a little bit of time, I think. We've got to develop our religion now so we can go for honor in the greater good. An honor duel will occur after a disciple performs a preparation ritual. Can trigger once between missions. This will grant a disciple a health buff and intercept buff for the next sacrament. We have honor and personal glory. Fierce duel will occur after a disciple makes a preparation. This will give a cunning buff and a crit chance buff. Okay, or we can come up with laws over here. We can also go with... Yeah, martial religion sounds like a really good idea. So that'll give us a martial religion upgrade that will increase might every time we do any of the rituals or the miracles that we're about to do. And we just built a hunter's lodge. So that seems like a pretty smart idea. We'll go after that one right there. Uh, we could go to the world map and we could try to duke it out with a few other people. They do seem a little stronger. So we may want to wait just a second before we do that, maybe a couple of days. I don't know what the timing is like in this game, or if it punishes you kind of like sitting around doing whatever. Several serfs have traveled to the holy site, eager to become your next disciples. You may summon these initiates and determine who is worthy enough to become acolytes of the pact. Every disciple requires an amount of your worshiper's support, so take care when making a selection. Okay. Yeah, we can summon the initiates. That's no big deal. So if we go to summon the initiates right here, Oh, it's that little button down there at the bottom. Never mind. Gotcha. So we have summoned the initiates. Who dares walk the path of the emperor? Who is brave? We have eight. Who is valorous? We have Tizo, who is strong-minded, and we have Sipak, who is strong body. Let's go with somebody who's valorous. That sounds good. She's kind of cute. I'll take her. The pig apparently is her sign. So she has a major health talent. Oh, yeah. Just reveal them all, I guess. They all seem to be about the same. Sometimes you'll get like a rare... So this game is kind of almost like a card game when you're selecting initiates. At least it was the last time I played the game. Sometimes you'll get ones that have like a foil background that are like really, really good by comparison to everybody else kind of at their level. Uh, I will take... Actually, she's the weakest of all of them. She's only got power four. These two have power five. Interesting. So that person's got major charisma. We've got major health. But no cunning. That might actually develop us a little bit. Maybe I'll take Tizo. Yeah, like, I think we could use some people that use charisma and use, like, magic in order to get stuff done. So we'll take you. And I don't know if I should take more disciples. I kind of want to diversify a little bit. So I already have a couple of people that are, like, physical. I think what I would like to do is I would like to, so like looking at these, 
Pretty much everybody we have is physically statted. I want to have a couple people so the next person we take will more than likely be mentally statted. That way we've got three warriors and then we've got two counselors or consulars or whatever you want to call them. You know, we've got ourselves a couple of people that can do some thinking and a couple of people that can do some bludgeoning. I think it's important to have both. Apparently, everybody is excited. We just got some new followers right there. Nice. Uh, so we can now assign people again, although we can still only assign one. I was hoping that this cap would go up right here so we could assign them to other stuff. But maybe we got to get further into... How much do the upgrades cost? They cost 200 tribute. We don't really have that rare. 200 materials or whatever. I don't think we have materials at the moment. What we could do is in selecting over here... We could take Ocelot. Yeah. Let's level up Ocelot. We're going to make him extra cunning. That's going to take four turns, though. That's a considerable amount of turns. Marathu prays to you. Oh, greatest emperor, I feel ready to perform a miracle in your honor. Marathu must perform a miracle to feel like their prayer has been answered. Okay, the serfs talk in hushed tones. It's been so long since the Emperor showed the sacrament sign. Tizo reassures them of your might, but you feel a growing doubt in their heart. Aw, oh, my faith has been lowered considerably. It's not good. How come everybody's not ecstatic anymore? Are you guys all bummed out? I don't want you guys to be bummed out. I want you guys to be, like, down with the cause. Come on. All right. Well, we got an eight right there. We got a five right there. We haven't done the sacrament in too long, so they're upset with us. Let's go be sacramental for a minute. I'm going to bring Tizo, just so we've got one mental guy leveling up. All right. Let's go. The sacrament. Oh, they got more HP than we do. This might not be good. Our religion might get stomped out. There's a pretty good chance that we may take the boots right now. I guess it kind of depends on attack power. This is not going quite as well as I had hoped. They do seem to be getting a lot more attacks than I am. Like, we came out kind of behind in the end. I think we're going to lose. I was going to say, unless we get, like, a really good attack off right there, I think we're toast. Yeah, we lost. Weak, dude. So, like, how do I... So, with that event that we got, we can get this guy a new class. I think a guardian would be a really smart idea. Yeah, let's have a guardian. That guy looks badass. I want him right there. I assume that's not going to make things better. Sometimes a mission fails. Take lessons from the failed mission and try to improve your chances. Gain more XP and perform more miracles to permanently improve your disciples. Prepare yourself for sacrament rituals. This will boost your disciples received, but it can save you many crystal skulls. Okay. I mean, we still got some new followers, so it's not that bad. I just wanted to get out there and do my thing. Uh, we're back up to people being satisfied. So that's really, really good, because we just had a sacrament or whatever. Why is this guy grumpy? Disciple name is doubting your greatness can be removed at the communing grounds. Okay, well, he's doing a miracle right now, so there's not much I can do with that. Ocelot blessed a hunter's weapons. Miraculously, the wild animals all ran towards the hunters. Truly, the emperor has control over beasts. Believe and I will provide. Splatty is the best Alright, so we got a whole bunch of extra stuff. We've got Claw now, which does 7 to 9 total damage. We also have Critical Claw. Looks like all of the stats went up slightly, so that's good. Now we've got to decide what everybody else is going to be doing right now. This guy had a prayer for a miracle. So I'm going to suggest that he go out I can increase your cunning or we can do like a prayer over here yeah I don't know what I want to do 
Let's have you gather serfs, I guess. The serfs talk in hushed tones. It's been so long since the emperor showed the sacrament sign. Damn, they did it again. So apparently they want you to fight like all the time. Then again, we did make a religion of war, so that kind of makes sense that they would want me to fight all the time. I mean, we can try again, but we got stomped out last time, so... It didn't work out so great. So that guy's got a miracle. This is a stronger team right here. We can try it. We're losing crystal skulls, though. We gotta get a few more. Honestly, I don't know why that person's starting out with less health. Maybe it's because they're in a bad mood or something? I don't know. So apparently we're using a wall right now. There you go. That's the hit right there. Ooh! Ooh! You guys just got styled on! You guys just got styled on. We came up in here just like, oof. Just finessed them, put the old English on it. That's what I'm talking about. So you guys level up a little bit. There you go. There you go. Maybe that'll bring people's moods up. The mission was a success. We got 40 more serfs. Yeah, you can see them streaming on in the village. Nice. Everybody's a streamer out here. I mean, we leveled up. Losing that fight was kind of a problem, but hey, we can increase our assignment. Nice, good. So now we have material gatherer as well. We can gain miracle XP from the structures. And then we've got a garden over here. A place made in harmony with the emperor to recover your HP. Nice, okay, good. That sounds like a decent plan. What can I build? I don't want to upgrade anything right now. I wanted to construct a building. So we've got a material gatherer that it wants me to build. Okay. We can put the material gatherer like, I don't know. Yeah, that sounds fine. We'll put it right there. I have no preference about where the material gatherer should go. It's one of those things that I don't really care about. I need to figure out how to like increase their faith. So what's wrong with this guy's faith right now? Well, he's got to wait for his miracle power to build up. That's where we're running into issues right now is that he doesn't he wants to do a miracle, but we haven't, like, had time to get his little meter up, so unfortunately, until that's done... Now, we need to assign people right now. I will assign Marathu to here, and then I will assign Karmana. Gather materials based on faith. Well... Maybe not. Maybe we'll have Ocelot do it then. Because, like, if the material gathering is based on their faith stat, then some of my people are kind of weak on faith right now. They're not doing a great job. Cool. Well, we got 25 materials right there, and we got 10 new followers, so that's good. And then people are apparently excited right now. This is the perfect moment for a sacrament. If you say so, Chief. If you say so. And we'll get 50 serfs over there if we attack them. We've got Hermit Rock... We should probably hit these guys. A three, a five, and a three. Yeah, we should be able to handle them, no problem. I'll put in some of my I'll put in some of my weaker guys, I think. Yeah, start the mission. Like I need this dude right here to level up a little bit. Oh really? They got 40 HP? Interesting. I don't know how this is gonna go. Maybe I should have played somebody else. Pretty solid hits right there in the beginning. Like, basically, I want Tizo to get his own class. Good, she's protecting people. That's what I like to see. I need protection going out, like, big time. War wind. Oh, sweet, dude. It was like an AoE. Nice. I bet that attack hits for a ton of damage, and her diving in front of that is saving us, like, this entire fight, is my guess. I like that protection ability, though. It reduces damage pretty considerably. So I think the last time she attacked, she did like two or three damage. So, like, it reduced it down to one. So a pagan chieftain has been dominated. Tizo can now unlock a class as well. Tizo can be a harbinger. Tizo can be a chieftain. 
Ortizo can be a rage prophet. I don't think you're going to be very good at rage profiting. I think Harbinger is the one that fits the best. I think we're definitely going to need Harbinger. Also, she gets that gangster bandana right there, so I'm down with that. And then miracles are charged for two of our people. So we did the sacrament right when it said we should do the sacrament. We brought in some new people. We're getting there. If we conquer like one or two more places, we'll be able to... Oh, we're almost out of crystal skulls, though. i got to figure out how I can get more crystal skulls. Like, I probably should have taken Marathu with me on that last fight so that Marathu would charge up and have a miracle available. Oh, Marathu has a miracle. Okay, well then, Marathu, go do a miracle. And then my faith appears to be pretty good. Carmona can perform a miracle as well. How many materials do I need to build some of this stuff? So we need 50 materials in order to make a meditation site. We can make some gardens. Uh, I think a place to heal is a really good idea. So let's maybe go out and do that. We'll put the gardens kind of in the back. And then as far as Carmona is concerned. Oh, but it costs us 25 of resources. Okay. Well, I think they heal a little bit on their own, so maybe it'll be all right. I need to figure out how I can get some more crystal skulls. Looks like they have one right there. Their tribute is three crystal skulls, so I'm going to have to hit them next. That'll give me a little bit of leeway. And then these guys right here will give me a god level up, if that's what I was looking for. So anyways, my name is Splattercat. This game is called Godhood. I lost track of time a little bit on this one because I'm enjoying myself. I hope you guys liked the video. They've added some stuff in the early access, definitely, since the last time I played the game. It almost feels like a completely different game. It feels much more structured, and it feels uh, very much more rigid, I guess. Uh, before, when I played this game, when it first came into early access in its earliest build, like, you could see the idea they were going for, but it lacked, like, it had the skeleton, but it lacked kind of the musculature to get there. Whereas now, I'm definitely getting a feeling of what the ultimate game is going to be like. From the updates they've done already, I can see what they're working towards more clearly uh, with the 1.0 edition. So anyways, my name is Splattercat, this is Godhood. If you wanted to get the game for yourself, i got a link for you down below. If you like what I do here on the internet, well... I appreciate that. You can leave a like down below the video to let me know you want to see more episodes of this if you wanted to see further stuff. Aside from that, if you don't know who I am and you got here by accident, my name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie gaming every single day so that you don't have to. It's my job to buy a ton of indie games, play them, and show you the best ones. How you doing? Take care, everybody. I'll see you with something hot and fresh off the skillet tomorrow.